So what can we expect from President Trump on his very first day, which, by the way, is tomorrow? To answer that question, we're joined by columnist, author, and Fox News contributor, and everyone's favorite person here in D.C., Charles Krauthammer. Charles, great to see you. So, Good to be here. I was going through the list of first day pledges uh, that Donald Trump made on the road, and it is a little longer than I realized. Let's appeal Obamacare, build a wall, stop Syrian immigration, lift the restrictions on oil exploration, um, goes on, cut sanctuary city funding, undo all illegal executive actions, get rid of gun free zones. I mean, I could, I could go on. All of them seem worthy to me. Can they be achieved immediately? No, they can't. Of course not. That's hyperbole, and that's what you do when you run. That's what you hope you can do. That's a four-year agenda. It'll take four years, if it can be done at all in its entirety. On day one, he'll cancel a few executive orders. That's probably all he can do. The rest you need Congress for. But they have an agenda. Everything that you listed is serious stuff. This is not just yeah. a guy who ran on vague, elect me, and you know, because you'll feel good. This is what I want to do, and it's a serious agenda. Incidentally, can I say a word about that kid who was setting the fire yeah. a couple of that minutes ago? That was bizarre. Ago? Yeah, but yes. wouldn't you love to be that kid? Parents who take you out <laughs> on, a, you know, on a winter night, and they encourage you to set fires? I'm sure it would have appeared, appealed to the anarchist in you. But it tells you oh, of course. how completely weird the parents and the other people out there are. That's These right. are the same people who show up at the IMF meetings, the World Bank, the Occupy Wall Street, you ask them why are you out there, they're completely incoherent. What did that woman say? There are Nazis upstairs at the National Press Club. I mean, these people ought to be medicated. Well, I think some of them are. But the idea that you would implicate your children in your political yeah. activism, you'd be out on the street at 9.30 yeah. at night letting your eight-year-old set fires is demented. And it, and it does, it says a lot. It's, it's got a whiff of ISIS to it. Yeah, it does. But there is, I mean, you'll notice that virtually everyone we've interviewed on Fox and on other channels, too, who's involved in these protests, they're all from a certain social class. I mean, you, you don't get the feeling that they just got off work at Hardee's or driving a truck. I mean, they all seem kind of like the idle class in America to me. Well, they've been unemployed ever since Occupy Wall Street shut its doors when it got cold. Yeah. I admire them for actually stepping out during a winter's day, and it probably won't last long. By Monday, the wind will have swept them away, and they'll wait for the next international occasion to go out and to act like anarchists, which is what they are, essentially. But, I mean, you've been here an awful long time. You worked in the Carter administration for Mondale, I think. So you've seen a lot of protests over the years. It seems to me the ones that are successful are the ones with discrete requests. You know, here's what we want specifically. We want you to cancel this. Yeah. We want you to enact that. I don't understand exactly what the agenda in these protests is. Well, they really have no agenda, uh, and they, they really have not. But I think the real culprits here are the people who ought to be the adults, the ones who ought to set an example, and that's the one-third of uh, Democrats in Congress who will refuse to attend and actively to boycott the inauguration. I think that is scandalous. Uh, a, a inauguration is not the celebration of party victory. It's a, kind of, it's a kind of civic sacrament for something that is exceedingly rare in the world, which is the transfer of power uninterrupted now for 240 years, the longest anywhere on earth. That's something that you celebrate. And I must say, you know, John Lewis we all agree there's no debate that he's a genuine American hero. But heroes yes. can be wrong. We have examples in our history. Charles Lindbergh was a genuine American hero, the most famous man in America throughout the 30s. And he picked the wrong side in World War II. He, he led did. the, the isolationists, and he essentially expressed sympathy for Nazi Germany. You can be wrong. Now, with Lewis, it's not just that he's a hero, but he's a moral hero because he sacrificed and he risked his life for a higher cause. But that doesn't change the fact that he can be wrong right. and he shouldn't be leading the boycott because he lends his moral authority to what is a deeply unworthy cause.
But for people under 30, none of that matters because everything is biography and identity, and ideas don't even enter into it, unfortunately. Charles, I appreciate that was really a succinct analysis and, and smart. Thank you. My pleasure. Great to be with you.